knew that he could handle the situation. See, personal development means at some point you got to get to the place to where you're mature enough to know, Lord, the answer to the question is always, you know what to do. Okay, see, y'all missed that. You missed, you missed that. You missed that. I, I, did, did I say that too fast? I need to slow down. The answer to every question is always, Lord, you know what to do. Amen. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me show you what I'm talking about. He wanted to see if Philip knew that he could handle the situation. So listen, was, was, and, and so the question is this, and I, I need to ask this of you, uh, but, but look at the scenario here. Was Philip really developing under the Lord's leadership? Was Philip really developing? Or was he just following because everybody else was following? Was he, was he following because it was a good thing? Was he following Jesus because Jesus was a good teacher? Was Philip really developing under the Lord's leadership? That's the question. Or was Philip just along for the ride? Was he not developing and hoping to hide from responsibility? Mm, 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 mm. Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? This is really crazy. And I need, I need you to look down in the crevice of your own personal spirit. Are you growing? Are you developing? Are you maturing under your pastor's leadership? That's a crazy, that's a, that's a, that's a loaded question, right? That's a loaded question. Because it kind of speaks to your own personal integrity. Because if you're not growing under your pastor, why are you still there? If the leadership of the pastor is not what it ought to be, then why are you present? So if Philip wasn't growing under Jesus, then why was he there? Wow. Come on, church. This is, this is, this is something, this is something I, I, I looked at. Was Philip really developing? Was he really becoming a leader? Or was he just watching the festivities? Philip, like we often do, listen to this, Jesus was trying to see if he had some spiritual development. Spiritual development. Touch your neighbor and say spiritual development. Spiritual development. And I want, to, I want you to see what Philip did. Philip, like we often do, was only looking at and working with what they, he thought they had physically. So Jesus trying to see if he's grown spiritually, but the first response of Philip is what? Physical. So you see, if you're growing maturity in spirituality, that means your first response ought not be from your flesh. Amen. Your first response should be a spiritual, mature, godly response. Look at what Peter said. Look, I mean, look at what Philip said. Philip was working with what they thought they had. Look at John 6 and 7, and I'm going to go to the New Living Translation because I want this to jump out at you. Philip replied, even if we work for months, we wouldn't have enough money to feed all these folks. Okay, y'all miss, miss that. Y'all miss that. That, that, that. Look, look, Philip a brother. Come on, Philip. Come on, Philip a brother, man. We could work for a month and I'd be able to feed all. Who, who, who invited all these folks here? Who told them we was here? So now look at that. Philip said, look, he, he gave Jesus a physical response. Never miss the fact that if you have Jesus, you have more than enough. How come Philip couldn't see that? Mm, mm. Okay, this is going to mess you up. You ready? Sometimes you can be too close to grow. Sometimes we allow the leader to lead so much, we never get a chance to grow by doing. Oh, that was the Trinity right there. That was, a, that was the Trinity right there. Pastor, do it. Oh, Lady Lewis, do do it. I don't know. It'll get done. But see, you're not growing because you are not having the opportunity to participate in actual ministry. They will always sit back and watch Jesus. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look what he just did. Oh, look at that. Now Jesus is saying, okay, Doc, what are we going to do? Spiritual development time. Personal development time. Okay, now look at this. 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 Oh, this is good. This is good. Never ever miss the fact that Jesus was there. So the problem was already worked out. Touch your neighbor and say, if you got Jesus, you are, it's already worked out. 
It's already worked out. It's already worked out. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. So now, you also have the one who can transform a little into more than enough. I'm going to show you how to transform little into more than enough. Anybody want to see that? In this text, Jesus shows you and shares principles of how to make little more than enough. Come on now. Come on. Okay, y'all, y'all ain't saying amen enough. I, I heard my mother say amen because they knew, they know their mothers, you know, they made, they made, they made meals out of nothing. Amen. Come on. Okay, y'all ain't. Uh, okay, see, see, y'all, see, y'all spoiled. Y'all spoiled today, y'all. Y'all spoiled. Mama and them had, grandma and them had to go in there and take what was left from what was left from what was left. Uh, she gonna, she gonna take the bone from the ham and throw it in some, okay, y'all ain't, uh, come on and, and, and make it taste like it has some meat in it. Woo, this is good, eh? Hey? You just, you getting some bone marrow in your stuff. Yeah, come on, y'all. Oh, stop it. I'm making, a, I'm making you hungry, and I'm making you hungry. Stop it, stop it. So now listen, now listen, so now uh, uh, Philip saw only what they had physically, but please understand that Jesus can transform what you have into more than enough, but you must see spiritually what's going on behind the scene. Now look, look, I want you to look at what was available. Y'all with me? I want you to look at what was available. John chapter 6, verses 8 and 9. Y'all ready? John chapter 6, verse 8 and 9. There it says, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? Please stop and look at this, all right? First of all, they jacked a little boy for his lunch. <laughs> Y'all don't see that, do you? That's in the text. <laughs> Little boy got lunch. Hey, man, hey, hey, give me that lunch. We need to feed these folks. What? What's... Come on now. So they took the little boy's lunch. Two fish, five loaves of bread. And then he said, look at this, look at this. But what are they among so many? Look at Andrew's actions. Y'all, we all with me? So what did Andrew do? Andrew did the same thing that Philip did. He worked with, he saw what they had and said, oh, this ain't going to work. So look at this. This is, this is turning out to be something crazy because look, now, 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 not only is one perplexed, but then another one comes and said, oh yeah, we got some, but it ain't enough. Come on, have you ever said to yourself, come on, have you ever said to yourself, yeah, I got something, but it ain't enough. I need to ask you a question now, and I want you to take a look. See, Jesus was trying to let them look at this thing from a spiritual perspective, but they look at a physical. Can I ask you to look spiritually and answer this question? What do you have to work with? Amen. What's in your wallet? Okay. Okay. What are you working with? What is, what is in your possession? What, what's there? What's there? Oh, I ain't got no education. Stop! Oh, I ain't got no money. Stop. Oh, I ain't got no real talent. Stop. Oh, my mom and them wasn't, wasn't there supportive to me. Stop. What's there? Stop talking about what's not there and tell me what is there. And that's what God is trying to get you to see, that you and him are more than enough. So here we go. Here we go. So now look at this. Look at this. So the first thing we're going to do, in order to make little more than enough, you've got to look at what you have from God's vantage point. Look at what you have from God's vantage point and what you have God can work with. So look at this. Jesus can bless what you have. Come on. Oh, man, that old car you got, he can bless it. Come on, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Them old kids you got, he can bless them. Come on, you. I, I, I know, I know, I know, I know. Listen to this. So here we go. Jesus can bless what you have. Do you really know what Jesus is capable of? And I think that's really what Jesus was trying to get Philip to understand. Do you know what I'm capable of? Ooh, wait. This is out cold. Why is it out cold? Listen to this. Jesus saying to you, to me, and to everyone, do you really know what I'm capable of? You ever had somebody mess with you and they thought you was nice and quiet and cool? 
And you said to them one more time, you have no idea what I'm capable of. Come on now. <laughs> we see you on TV. They carrying you out. Uh-uh. <laughs> Tried to warn him. Amen. Amen. All right. Y'all, 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 y'all don't want to get into that. Amen. So look at this. Do you really know what Jesus is capable of? Consider this. Consider this. The disciples had seen Jesus do miracles. The Bible says right there in the, in, in the, in the, in the, in the second verse that, that, that all the people saw him heal people. And now here he is saying, what are we going to do? And they saying, well, we, uh, we ain't got enough money. Uh, we ain't got enough food. Uh, stop. If Jesus needed medicine to heal folk, if he didn't need medicine to heal folk, why would he need that to feed folk? So now, here we go. Consider this. The disciples have seen Jesus do miracles prior to this, but they seem to be unsure if he can handle this one. Are you unsure that Jesus can handle your one? Look at this. I didn't say what do you, what you think he's capable of. I said, do you know what he is capable of? Now, this is going to take you a minute to get this. Here are the next steps to making what you have more than enough. You ready? Here's what happens. Jesus takes control of the situation. So let, let me say this. In order to, get, to make sure you got more than enough to take your little and make sure you're more than enough, you need to give Jesus control. Amen. Stop trying to control it. Let Jesus control it. Mm-hmm. Now, how do you let Jesus control it? Here, well, well uh, uh, proverbially, you put it in his hands. In other words, you give him possession of it. You give him authority of it. You give him the right to direct you as to how to do what to do. So look at this. So here's what he did in this scenario, and this is what he does in our lives. He takes control of the situation. Here's how he did it. Number one, he set things in order. All right? He set things in order. Ooh, are you learning anything tonight? Are you learning? Is this blessing you tonight? All right, all right, all right. Because I can go sit down if I, ain't, if I ain't doing it. If I ain't helping you, I can go sit down. Amen. Amen. Here we go. So he set things in order. Look at John 6 and verse 10. John 6 and verse 10. Come on. You know I'm a slave to the text. Y'all know. Y'all know. We talk about hostages. I am a hostage to the text. It's okay to be a hostage to the text. All right. John 6 and 10. It says, then Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now, there was much grass in this place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. Okay, now you need to understand context, all right? Here's context. In those days, listen to this, in those days, men sat together. Okay, in that culture, men sat together. The women, children did not sit with the men, so the men sat together. So now look, he, t- he, had, he, he set order. So he, they made the men sit down, and the men totaled 5,000 people, right? Okay, what about the women and kids? Because remember, remember.